to the Spotlight with Osaka Jack on Everfree Network. Hello, everyone. This is Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. With me today, I have someone that you've probably heard of before, uh, Mr. Vincent Tong. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing well now that I have a Skype account. Yes, a that new works. Skype account that's <laughs> brand new. <laughs> Yes, technology has foiled my plans. <laughs> I I have to say, I think you are probably one of the only interviews I've had in the last year that didn't have to set their status to private. <laughs> just Perfect. because you just created it, there's no way anybody else knows about this one. Yeah. <laughs> if you start getting messages now, then something's odd because, yeah. Yeeks! <laughs> <laughs> That's well, fair. if anybody is living under a rock with their fingers in their ears, could you give a quick description of who are you? What do you do? Um, I am, well, I do some voices for My Little Pony, and that's probably why I'm here, I think. Um, yeah, I've done um, some some characters for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, mm -hmm. and those characters being Garble the Dragon, Prince Blue Blood. And um, Donut Joe or Pony Joe, whichever you go with. Um, <laughs> and then uh, in Flash Sentry for the Equestria Girls. Mm, yes. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that's the only reason you're here. I mean, well. it's <laughs> how I became aware of you, I'll say that. All right, sounds good. It is a definite disadvantage for me in that I don't get a chance to see new English animations until they've been out a few years. Oh, yeah? Well, any of your other stuff it hasn't come to Japan. <laughs> and it's probably, yeah, it's probably in Japanese, right? Well, Would most of it? yeah, most of the animation would be in Japanese. If it gets a big enough fan base, like Pony, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. there will be uh, the English version with Japanese subtitles. But, oh, okay. Yeah, usually if it's for kids, it'll just be dubbed. And right. While Pony was airing, as I mean, it's still airing for a few weeks at least. <laughs> <laughs> it had the bilingual option on the televisions. Oh, okay. I don't know if that exists in North America. Um, pro I don't know actually. Maybe, oh. I was gonna say maybe Spanish for for Netflix. Okay, but, yeah, um... also, but no, like just any television somebody has, there's a bilingual button, and if it's in English, you push the button, changes to Japanese dubs. No so way. Choose which language you want to listen to. Mm. And Pony was the only animation to have two options. That's special. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's Very why it's like, I'm sure. It's just that reason alone. And <laughs> <laughs> Do you happen to recall, how did you get uh, started in specifically voice acting? Uh, voice acting. I'll, I always, you know, as a kid, I was very ADD, and I still am. Okay. Kind of bouncing off the walls and just couldn't stop... Um, being goofy and crazy and mimicking people all the time and uh I'd watch the simpsons and kind of do you know mo and barney and never could do a really good homer um but uh yeah it sort of just started from there and 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 being a kid in the the jim carrey era where he was doing lots of um uh, you know, in, in Living Color and Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, all those kind of oh, I um, influences. Well. <laughs> yeah, you know, because like that was like the. No, he was a he was a big influence, you know, as a kid. Oh yeah. Doing voices, because <clears throat> his characters were hilarious. And I loved um, it in uh, the movie Liar Liar, where he has to tell the truth to his child, and his child asks him, "Well, my face." Will my face freeze if I do this? And he says, no, <laughs> right. actually, quite a few people can make a good living doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A little homage to himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I, I just always, you know, I, I would wake up and watch my, my Saturday morning cartoons, watch like Bobby's World and Ninja Turtles and stuff, and mm -hmm. just love cartoons. I used to love it. And I remember there was one Full House episode where, where Uncle Joey, you know, he does, Mr. Wurtschuk. Yes. And, um, and I was like, oh, and he always wanted to be a cartoon voice. And they did this one episode where they visited Disney World and they, he got to visit the animation studios. And I'm a huge Disney fan. So mm -hmm. um, seeing like, oh, OK, and then I, I kind of became aware of the fact that, OK, there are actual voice actors. I didn't even think about that. Right. Yeah. As a kid, yeah. you just watch these cartoons and you're making, right. you know, copying their voices and mimicking things. But you don't really 
realize that there's actually people behind these voices, these characters. Sure. So um, I discovered that, and I was like, oh, okay, that's that's fun. I, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> and then uh, eyes opened wide. This is a career option. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, but but I still didn't realize that I could do it. I just realized it was out there. But mm-hmm. for for um, you know, a Chinese Canadian kid, that's probably not the the best career choice. <laughs> so um, uh, I didn't really get into it until after I went to performing arts school for a year. I I wanted to do a demo. I wanted to record an anim- animation demo, mm-hmm. and a buddy of mine had some equipment. So we just sort of slapped something down. Uh, it was I wrote a whole script. It was called Fridge Freaks. Okay. And uh, it was about these um, condiments and and vegetables in a fridge that wanted to escape the fridge because they didn't want to be eaten. And so gotcha. they're all talking to each other. Tell and, me um, you had one joke where the uh, tomato paste was slow and people said ketchup. No, I wasn't <sighs> that clever. <sighs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, had, it had some farts in it. That's all I remember. There was a, that would it be was horseradish, a, I'm guessing. Maybe. Or, yeah, just some sort of tuna or ah, egg, yes. egg tuna sandwich maybe combo okay. it was a cacophony when people were just trying to argue about the plans at the end of everyone was talking to each other and then and then and then i added a which is my favorite sound in the world um <laughs> I'm gonna make i do it all the time tone. <laughs> i do it constantly even in my sleep i'm just like <laughs> um but yeah so anyways i'm like totally <laughs> distracting myself from the actual point I've of always the story. said if I... my interview stays on track the whole time I have wasted an hour of my life. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> I, I really don't know where I was going with this how did I get started yes uh yeah it's okay yes yeah mm, so yeah I, I I laid down this four minute way too long demo and I pitched it around and yeah I didn't get you know much of a bite from anybody mm. And then it wasn't until I did, um, I got, I finally got into the, I didn't even get into the room. What did I get into the room for this one? My very first cartoon Mm -hmm. was called Sushi Pack. And it was an ABC cartoon written by the same writers as Animaniacs. So a very funny script, but unfortunately it just never did very well. I I don't think the, the concept of it kind of, you know, caught on. Sure. But, um, it was, uh. I played this big fat tuna. His name was Toro. And um, <laughs> it was like great for me because I was like finally in there. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, and I was working with, you know, learned who were the, 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 the big shots in town. So work with Sam right. Vincent and Andrew Francis, Scott McNeil. Um, nice. uh, who else was there? Oh, T- Tara Strong. Yes, she was on Tara it. Strong. And, yeah, yeah. But she was um she was down in LA. She came up a few times to record with us. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, it was a really fun project and that was my very first cartoon and then i got on to uh, iron man okay. Iron Man adventures that right. was the next sort of big thing mm-hmm. and at the same time i got an adr series called death note ah yes where i played uh, matsuda mm-hmm. so and then that's sort of where it started okay and um and then it kind of yeah, I was I was quite content with like doing these these three shows, and I was very very happy. I was like, "Whoa, this is really fun!" Mm-hmm. Just had a blast doing all yeah. this stuff and learning so much from all of the the legends. You know, these guys right. have been doing cartoons since I was a wee one. Right. <laughs> so it was really really fun, kind of learning from them and seeing how how the business works. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, just glancing at the uh, sushi pack description, and it says it's five pieces of crime fighting sushi. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and I was uh, the part of the, the the league of low tide or something. Okay. Yeah, I was a I was a villain. <laughs> mm-hmm. I okay. I was a bad piece of tuna. I'm sorry, but Toro is not a bad piece of tuna. I don't know no. why they would. Uh, it seems misnamed to me, yeah. but. I think Unagi was another bad guy. Because he's electric, he's the, the electric eel, right? Okay, well, I, yeah. I can see the connection there. Electricity and the unagi, fine. Mm-hmm. And I'll grant you, I'll grant you, I had never tried sushi until I came to Japan. Really? Well, living you probably in the... that's a, probably a good thing because they've kind of bastardized it over here in North America. It wasn't that it was bastardized so much in my area. It's just that living a two-day drive from any ocean, there's no way it's going to be fresh. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, no doubt. I know every single state in America has a different legal definition of the word fresh. 
mm-hmm. for fish. And my state's legal definition was it has been frozen within 24 hours of being caught and is less than eight months old. Oh, that's nasty. So, yeah, you could, you could be – so fresh sushi could be almost celebrating its first <laughs> birthday. <laughs> that's like, not how we do it in Van City over here. It, yeah, and I, I've seen some – different versions on the coasts, which I think some Japanese people might scoff at a bit, but honestly, if it mm-hmm. tastes good, I say go with it. Fusion food is where it's at, I guarantee you. Sure, yeah. I'd be curious, I would love to go to Japan and try the sushi there, because I've heard it's very, it's very simple, Yeah. And delicious. Well, if, if, unless I'm mistaken, unless I got it wrong, sushi was kind of Japan's version of the sandwich. Just yeah. like a cheap way to have, I want to eat the thing, and I want to eat the thing holding the thing. So we put it together and make a sandwich. Yes. <laughs> oh, in the middle, sushi sandwich. And of course, there are you know the high class places where you know you don't get to know how much and everything is until you're finished eating. Then the cook tells you. But then there's also the places where it's. God, have you seen the conveyor belt sushi places? Yes, yeah. I've actually had, had one in uh, San Francisco. Okay, yeah. It was pretty fun. They're fantastic because you're mm-hmm. just like, I'm waiting for a blue plate. Yeah, I want this, this one and this Oh, I don't want this one. Let's go and put it back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Take a bite. I don't like it. Put it back. <laughs> Stud, I can kind of see why Sushi Pack didn't make it, but still, it should have been given a chance. Ah, uh, Sushi Pack. <laughs> oh, dear. Got me my start, anyways. Absolutely. Yeah. I would guess that there's a huge difference between recording something that's for English and doing the uh, dub work, as you did in Death Note. Yes. Yeah. It's a lot. I find it so hard to do ADR. Mm-hmm. Um, matching up the the lip flaps with the timing of breaths, and if he he pauses for a second, but then. Sp- continues to talk and it slows down and you got you don't memorize your scripts when you're doing voiceover work so you're constantly looking up at the screen and looking down and looking up and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it took me forever i was i was awful at it <laughs> well i mean i'm sure that's why it's not done live anymore yeah um. <laughs> well it, it was uh they had a thing called rhythm band before i don't know here's some history of voiceover <laughs> well back in the day they had this thing called rhythm band and what Rhythma Band was is that it was a one person that would go over all the dialogue and actually write it out by hand. Huh. And if and if the word was no, the O would be stretched out. Okay. So it was crazy. There was a one. It was a, I think there was like one person in in America that did this work. Okay. And um, they would actually have to write it out and in time with this. It's sort of like karaoke. Right. But handwritten karaoke. So this person would be in there having to sync up the timing of the words and the phrases and write it out so that you'd finish saying the word by the time you've seen the writing. Gotcha. It's it's insane. I'm guessing that explains the – I mean it's almost a common joke now if you watch the old like Speed Racer episodes – where they would say their line and then add the extra oh at the end. <laughs> we have to oh, go over there I and think... the car's not going so fast. Speak, can they do it oh? <laughs> they had to find some filler. I'm Sometimes sure, yeah. You, just yeah. Wouldn't, you wouldn't get it. So you'd maybe have to do it in the beginning if they started too quickly. But, oh, no, let's go hurry quickly. Oh. <laughs> I think we should just do that. That'd be fun. I think it'd be hilarious. Just yeah. randomly, just like go, you get one take mm-hmm. and like good luck. <laughs> Good luck. I have seen, and I can't recall the name off the top of my head, but it was an anime that was dubbed in English, but they gave the dubbing team like very little time, but as much creative control as they wanted. So oh a lot of the stuff, they translated the main points, but then the show was so bad that they added lines like, you know, it had them like doing the bad animation run where they're not getting anywhere. And <laughs> one character actually said to the other, do you feel like we're moving at all? I feel like I'm just standing still. <laughs> No way. They actually did that? They actually did that, and that was released. And wow. it's got a small cult following in uh, America that I've seen of just people laughing at how funny the dub work was. Because it, <laughs> they just kind of like, we know this isn't going to be popular, and the animation's not that great, and the story's bad, so just right. add whatever we want to, okay? <laughs> nice. I'm in favor of this. Yeah. I think. Why not? Yeah. Just randomize it. <laughs> um, have you watched uh, – do you watch a lot of anime? I – don't watch as much as people think I do. 
<laughs> I try some of the new anime when I can, mm-hmm. and I enjoy some of it. Um, yeah. I, I'm getting tired of some of the tropes that are present in every single one. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm really tired of the, uh, and I understand it's a different culture, but I'm tired of if a character says somebody, another character's name, and then it's silent for 30 seconds. That's <laughs> supposed to be a big dramatic part. And I'm like, That's cliche, man. That's the cliche. Yeah, and it's fine if we're doing it as a joke, but I've seen so many where it's the actual thing. It's like, mm-hmm. Riko-chan. And then just silent, and the wind blows through <laughs> their hair, and their eyes vibrate somehow. Yes, vibrate. Yeah, that, that's the hardest thing. I've tried that, and I've strained my eyes so hard. So don't don't attempt it, people. Just don't try it. Or try and, and have some fun. Maybe you'll see something I don't see. I, I, I actually can do – I learned this in high school in, in the drama club. I can twitch my eye just a little bit and force myself to cry within a minute. Dude. You'd be like the best actor. <laughs> just force yourself to cry. They, that's what they love. The close-up twitching in the eye. And they, yeah. <laughs> just add a bit of in, inhale. <laughs> Golden. I Golden. can do it, – it's, it's a very effective technique actually teaching kids is if they're having problems with something, you pretend that you're having a much bigger problem. Break down. <laughs> you're terrible. No, no. It, because it – like you can see when a kid's about to lose it because right. they can't get a concept. And if you let it keep lose it more, it is, so you you just lose it more, and, and you like... lose it more, and you explode into sobbing cries, <laughs> and throw yourself on the ground, and roll around, and stomp, and just say, "I can't do it. It's so difficult." It's so... <laughs> and it and everybody's laughing at you, and then the kid realizes if they start laughing at you, they're not the ones being laughed at anymore. They relax a little bit, and it's fine. Way to go! Wow, it's I'm, I'm... taking one for the team. Yes. <laughs> I'm jumping up in the middle of a battlefield with a huge target on my chest. Oh, look at me! I'm going to get hit! <laughs> oh, dear. And um, we, well, we've touched on it a bit, but yes, you have done some pony voices. <laughs> yes. Just, yeah, a few of those. Yeah, a few. I, <laughs> I'm curious, when did you, do you recall when you first found out about the fandom? Because mm-hmm. you had, uh, I mean, we mentioned uh, Pony Joe or Donut Joe, mm-hmm. Joe with donuts, etc. Name, whatever. Yes. So you've been characters in the first season when I think the fandom was still relatively unknown before the right. explosion. Do you happen to recall how you first found out about it? I found out from Ashley. Okay. Because um, Ashley Ball and I, we used to do, sing and dance together in, in oh, this nice. um, performance choir. Okay. So she's been a friend for a long time. Gotcha. And uh, so she was saying, "Oh, I do, I do these um, voices on My Little Pony, and there's a good, there's a thing called bronies." And I'm like, "What's a brony? <laughs> this is this sounds weird." <laughs> so then I didn't really, you know, pay it no mind until mm. I got more involved in the show. Sure. And then there's these conventions, and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> so these people put on conventions and stuff. So then I started researching it and, and um, kind of asking people about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, people were like, yeah, they're, they're really fun, loving people that just like the show. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and my real first introduction to uh, an actual brony <laughs> was Dusty Cat. Oh, okay. It was it was dusty. I got um I got on a show somehow. I don't even remember how, but um <laughs> I was just like I was on the internet one day. I was like, "What? Hello? What?" <laughs> Talking to somebody. And um but yeah, he was uh they him and Screwball interviewed me and <laughs> and then I just sort of got immersed in it. And and then going to my first uh Pony Con, which was at Brony Can. Okay, in, right. In uh, Vancouver, Richmond, right. BC, um, I got to meet a lot of people, <laughs> and it was awesome. It was so great. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, I loved it. It was just such a it's such a a vibrant community of positivity and love. That's what I love about it. Yes, very true. There's very so true. many things that are just downright depressing in this world, and I think that bronies kind of just embrace the the best parts of of being human i really do i would agree i 
yeah, I've I've mentioned it, but I live in an itty bitty apartment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've got a I've got a decent job, but I'm not going to pretend that it's not stressful. And mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of things on the news really make me w- never want to watch the news again. And it's... yeah, I, I really don't watch a lot of the news. I really don't. I mean, oh, yeah. I know I have to be aware of the of the world, but it really does bring me down so much. Absolutely, I I, I would agree. I get I get some grief from my family for not really knowing a lot about the news and i'm like well how does it affect me beyond making me sad i know <laughs> of it and mm-hmm. you know i know more things about. but it's i think it's nice to have something that's truly positive absolutely yeah and it's like you know we have to balance like everything in life you got to balance it out so sure. Sure. i like that i do know about the the current affairs as well as as yep. knowing about brony life and and yep. all the good that 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 this community does for the world, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a really cool thing. Yeah. I really, I really love it. <laughs> Though we'd be remiss to not mention you do play a character who is not as popular as the others. I know. I know. Donut Joe. A lot of people just yeah, have a big thing against them. I'm sorry, Poor but guy. why would you have a strawberry frosted donut as the cutie mark? Why not a cruller? <laughs> Crullers well, are the best. They are. Hey, they definitely. I call them crullers. I think. Huh. Cruller? Cr- what do you say? I say cruller. Cruller. Honey because... cruller. Oh, yeah, I say honey cruller. See, to me, that sounds like a donut that is more cruel than it's a bit the others. Mean. It's a bit mean. It does. It is a bit mean, though. Kind of, of course. Then again, we have the... bear claws. So mm-hmm. bear, claw, bear claws are crullers. <laughs> is that different? Is that a different thing? I think so, yeah. In ours, okay. a bear claw is specifically, in my area, a bear claw was specifically cinnamon and honey oh. in a certain shape, and yeah. crullers could be others. But mm. I'm not a donut a, master. It sounds like you are. You're like a donut connoisseur. <laughs> I know what I like. <laughs> <laughs> we have these, uh, the Boston, Boston Creams. Oh, okay. Boston Cream. I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it's like chocolate glaze with the the custard inside. Yes, Love it. yeah, have those. The uh, actual Japan uh, has Mr. Donut. And Mr. Donut. Oh, sorry. Actually, Mr. Do Donut is the theme song. Mr. Donut. Yep. But no, one of their best ones, curry. Curry donut. Yep. No sugar on it, so it's not a sweet one. But they take the dough, they put curry on the inside, and they deep fry it with a crispy outside. Damn, Gina! It's fantastic. That sounds good. It's really good. Isn't that just a samosa? Um, not a different type of. I mean, samosas that I've had anyway are a thin, uh, almost rice paper style cover. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And this is a donut. An actual donut. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Stop like a jelly donut, curry. but no jelly. We just put curry, curry inside and no sweetness. That sounds great. It's fantastic. I want one. Oh man. I'm actually debating getting one after this. Hmm. Mm. And walking distance, I could do it. Ooh! Japan is full of fun. Tokyo is the capital of Japan and always will be, <laughs> but Osaka is the food capital of this country. Yeah? We've got it all. Mm-hmm. I like to eat. I want food from you there. Here we got lots of different stuff that's good. I want it. I want it. I want to <laughs> eat it. But I won't eat those. I mean, I don't know if this is a Korean delicacy or a Japanese one. Mm. Um, it, it, the, the the live octopus. Um, I think it's Korean. I think it's Korean as well, but I don't know of a Japanese person that would refuse it. <laughs> like, I'm game. I'll do it. I am um, I'm curious. Uh, of course, uh, Pony is popular, but what are some of your other uh, things that you're in that you think have gotten a, a good hold? Um, cartoon wise, I would say No, we'll say everything. Everything. Food everything, yes. Um well, probably cartoons is is like the medium that has gotten me at least the most okay. uh attention. Mm-hmm. And I would say Ninjago probably is one of the bigger ones. Okay, that's the uh Lego one? That's the Lego one, yeah. That's gotcha. the Lego ninjas. Mm-hmm. I play Kai on that one. <laughs> the red ninja. It's actually my boss's son's name. Is it? Yeah. Kai. Yeah. So Which doesn't make much sense that he's red, but anyway. Why is that? Well, the kanji that you can use for well, at least one of the versions of kanji that you can use for Kai means ocean or sea. 
Oh, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it back. Perhaps he's from the uh, uh, Asian area, and it's from the Red Sea. <laughs> Wow, I don't think they thought that deeply about it. It's just Kai. It's just okay. Kai. The other guy's name's Jay. Cole. It doesn't. It's not that. It's not that heavy, man. It's right. It's just right. a name. <laughs> so uh, I think that one's probably the biggest one. Mm-hmm. Um, I did this show called Packages from Planet X, which is on Disney XD. Okay. Uh, I played Dan Zabrowski. That was lots of fun. Lost my voice on that that show almost. Really? Just from yeah. exertion or was it? Yeah, exertion or... and also the fact that it's like we did uh, – it wasn't like a half-hour show. So it wasn't like a 22-minute show. It was two 11-minute shows Okay. every time you went to record. So you have a four-hour recording session. And, and uh, every episode, every 11-minute episode, so you do two episodes uh, a session, mm-hmm. was Dan Zabrowski. He would get these packages from Planet X. Okay. And um, he would always mess around with it. He was always eager to test it out before they scientifically tested it. Okay. And he'd use it for his own fun and amusement. And he would always end up burning himself or <laughs> or sending himself catapulting down through a canyon or, or getting electrocuted, something that would cause the voice actor, me, to mm-hmm. scream my face off. Gotcha. So it would have to have like a, you know, a, a climax in the, be- in, in the middle – for him to get zapped somehow, and then at the end he learns his lesson. But then, guess what, guys? There's another episode, <laughs> and so he's got another package to. <laughs> he's got another package to zap himself with. <laughs> that sounds gross, but sort of fun. Just reminds um, me of the dinosaur show where that we're going to need another Timmy. Uh, dinosaur show. Dinosaurs. Uh, uh the uh. Huge, not quite Muppets, but they were... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they used to watch... Yes, sh- baby! Exactly, yes. Yes. And they used to watch a show on the television there where it had, like, a Mr. Science and mm-hmm. uh, Jimmy, who would always get exploded or eaten right. or something, and they were going to need another Timmy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, okay. and But every, every episode was... We still have the same Dan, and um, <laughs> and Dan's gonna get zapped, and you know, crap is gonna happen to him. But it was a really fun show. I loved it. It was like my first uh, lead part, I think. Okay. Because it was like a, it was like a few years. Um, you know, I did the, I did the, the pilot. Right. And then you know, it was Dan Zabrowski. I got the pilot, and I was excited. Mm. And uh, it was my first lead part. And then they were like greenlit, like three years later. Oh, wow. And I was like, awesome. This is great. And then they're like, yeah, you have an audition for Dan Zabrowski. I'm like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> but that's when you realize the realities of your industry. So yeah. even though your voice helped to get the project, you know, greenlit, mm-hmm. you have to audition again. Yeah. Yeah. So I was up against all the, the, the top people in town again and mm. was just hoping to get the part again because it was such a fun part. And I sort of felt like it was my baby. Right, right. And uh, so thankfully booked it. And um did that for a season and uh yeah it was super fun but then so this is the reason why my voice was kind of shot was because i was doing that guy hmm. and at the same time you know he's up here the whole time like what i am all right i can i can't even do his voice anymore it was just mm-hmm. so it was my voice is i don't know a bit more malleable back then i don't know right but um but then i had to do this show called lolly rock where i played mephisto and so i had to stretch my voice down here the whole time Gotcha. So it was a bit of a kind of a roller coaster for my for my vocal cords. Right, right. Um, and so I had to kind of do some vocal core therapy. Oh my. And and kind of go on vocal rest and not mm. sing my Stevie Wonder when I'm in the shower. Uh huh. Uh huh. So <laughs> I had to do a bit of chilling out on my own and Is, and watch out. When you have a, a difficult schedule like that, when you're recording multiple voices. I, I honestly don't know. It's just personal uh, observation with me. I know that if I'm trying to speak or something, if I'm if it's super early in the morning, I've got a much deeper bass to my voice oh, yeah. than usual. Early in the morning is early the in best the morning. time yep. to sound like Barry White. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, baby. Is it? I mean, is it frowned upon if you ask the director, "Hey, look, could I get a really early morning session for this voice because it's a little <laughs> bit easier on me"? Or yeah, it's not even not even frowned upon because you can't even do that. You can't even request that. It's not up to oh, us. Okay. It's not up to even them. It's about scheduling. It's gotcha. about scheduling so many different factors. Um, you know, I mean, that's why my agent is so amazing is because they have to schedule 
all the cartoons that you're on um, according to when the studio is available. Gotcha. When all the cast is available, when your director is available, and if the director is from L.A., when they have a time because they're super busy. Sure, sure. Or people that are like – we have some – I've worked on cartoons where people are not are in Australia. Hmm. So everyone has to be awake at the right time. You know, it's like you. You're 11 a.m. right now. So yep. we always have to to find a time that all of these factors will work out for everybody. Gotcha. Okay. So it's quite difficult. And um, I'm doing a show for uh, Netflix right now. And this is one I can actually talk about. Oh, nice. It's uh, – it's based on King Kong. Okay. And um, I play this kid named named Danny. Okay. And uh, yeah, he's this really young guy, you know. So it's gonna be quite hard to get this high at nine a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least your voice that high. <laughs> right, right, right. But uh, yeah, so you know, it, it, but I have a nine a.m. session I think on uh, on Wednesday. So, oh my. Um, you just have to wake up extra early, do some vocal exercises, and, mm-hmm. and get prepped that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just gotta do it. Have there been? I mean, okay, and again, I honestly don't know. But is it frowned upon if, if for example, you're doing a voice that requires more phlegm? Can you bring like a glass of milk with you? Oh, that's just nasty. Um, well, I've heard some voices where I'm like, wow, I really hope they get to gargle afterwards or something. But, <laughs> and I, I know uh, it's just their choice and they're doing it, but I'm like. I, I can get a phlegmy voice if I'm drinking a lot of milk, but... Well, no, I've never heard of that. No, oh, okay. we've, right. we've done, you know, if we need to burp, then some people bring in some pop or shove mm. a cookie in your mouth because you need to do a line with your mouth full. Right, right. And uh, those cookies are usually supplied by Tabitha St. Germain <laughs> because every session she goes to, she brings goodies for us, which is really nice. I have heard that. That's yeah. incredibly sweet. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, it, you know, a funny story about her was that, you know, speaking of losing our voices, mm. she was she got really sick, uh, I think it was last year. Oh, my. And um, she had to go on some vocal rest because, you know, it's just a matter of getting her voice back, right. which she did, thankfully. Yep. But, yeah, because she's so in demand as a voice actress in town, mm. you know, the animation studios were sort of at a, at a halt because she did so many voices on so many shows. Right, right. So it was quite funny to to go like, wow, she is definitely in demand because everyone's, you know, we're either picking her up or they're not even doing the session. Right. Wow. <laughs> but uh, thankfully she got better. And, Good. Um, yeah. She's constantly working. Has there ever been an incident where just allergies are bugging you and you have to go <clears throat> in fully doped up on Benadryl or... Oh, yeah. I remember oh, I got this one part on Ninjago that I, I had the flu. Oh, no. I was, it was snowing outside, and I was, like, literally shaking. I was, like, shivering oh, the whole time. Oh, no. And I couldn't even read straight. And I was like, oh, my gosh, let's just get this done. But you just – you got to do it, right? You right. got to suck it up and, and just hope, hope that the voice comes out. Well, I mean, I think that's the difference. I see a lot of people – a lot of people on Twitter have – voice actor in their bio and i'm like i don't think you do that as a <laughs> job i think you would like to and i think you can do right. odd voices sure but mm-hmm. i think that's the difference between being good at doing voices and being able to do it as a career yeah it's, maybe i don't i mean i don't everyone's... want to smoosh somebody's dream on that not at all yeah. but you know, I'd... you know, to each his own. That's all I say. To each his own. If you want to identify yourself as whatever you want, go sure. For I it. mean, and then yeah. and it, it, when the time comes to to if if you have to prove it, then then that'll speak for itself, <laughs> right? Uh, very similar to when people put DJ on their thing. Like, really, you're a DJ? <laughs> Is that beyond your iPod? Just checking. Oh, I've had some, <laughs> I've I've been to like some clubs or some parties where the DJs just basically like let the whole track fade and then start up the new song <laughs> or just uh, totally mess up the beat and, and kind of overlap it. Say, Whoa, this is terrible, but I think you're actually getting paid for this. Oh man. But you know what? Maybe they're just learning. Maybe they're just Possibly. starting out. And that's yep, could okay. just have a bad day. We've said that's yeah, definitely possible. That's all right. yeah. But when it happens after the 20th song and it's the same style, you're kind of like, yeah, yeah. why not to try something else? Yeah, it's like you're not going to invent reggae again, man. Come on. <laughs> that was not a complete non sequitur. I, I did. I, I, I don't know if <laughs> I have heard that reggae was actually 
uh, created because of bad radios. Oh, really? Well, apparently the radios in the uh, Caribbean area couldn't get a very strong signal. So mm -hmm. when rock and roll was playing, they wouldn't hear do 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 for the beat. They would hear do 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 do. <laughs> and they thought, and they thought, well, that's how the beat should go, isn't it? So they started making their own music with that beat, and reggae was born. The origins of reggae. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, you got it down now. Now that actually brings up an interesting question: What accent is just beyond you? Oh, I think so many. I used to be very <laughs> good at accents. I used to okay. be very, very good at them, and I think because of the nature of my work now that it is work now. Yeah. Um, I concentrate on the characters that I'm doing, so I don't research as much, I think, mm -hmm. um, which I would like to go back to because I mean, that's where I sort of started was doing different accents. Right. Um, and I think my, you know, the Chinese accent is like, it's still probably one of my better ones. If you, if you want to say that, um, I can do a little bit of a Chinese accent because my first job was working for a, a Chinese man, but see, he only scream at me. So, <laughs> So you just have a screaming Chinese accent. You, you, is... you, you go over there. You clean the thing now. I, I don't care <laughs> if it's working or not. You get it done. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's the best I can do. <laughs> only screaming. <laughs> yeah. I had yeah, a... That why was it's not one, my job. That was one of my characters for Kid vs. Cat, one of my earlier cartoons. Oh, really? Was uh, playing Henry. And um, this was, you know, sort of my the beginnings of my, my career. And uh, it was with the, the company, with DHX, actually. Okay who do My Little Pony. Mm -hmm. And I think this is probably the, the, the turning point for my career, I think, was because I was working with the people that were involved with a lot of the, the cartoons in, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. um, but I was auditioning for this guy named Henry, and uh, I was supposed to be Dennis's dad, and Dennis is played by Kathy Wesley. Okay. And I'm like, okay, so just going for dad. Oh, but he's he's Asian. I'm like, oh, he is? I don't even know. <laughs> so I got a, so they asked for a slight Asian accent. So I was in there. It was kind of like that awkward... Um, um, the usual suspects are in there. Right. The usual Asian suspects are in there. Right. And uh, we there's like four or five of us, and we have to audition one by one. And then mm -hmm. you know when they come out, they tell you who got it. Right. And so I go in there, and um, they ask me to do it. And I you know I do you know the proper like Hong Kong accent if they want it. So I did the whole line like this. It's just fine. They're like, okay, can you do a little bit more of an accent? <laughs> I'm like. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I I, I was like, okay, fine. Then then the lines are like this. Then that I, is, is is that better? That I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's totally, totally what we like. Um, do you can you go a little bit more? I'm like, hmm. I think I know where you're going with. So like basically the end of the day, I was like talking like this, and man, I got the part. You know, holy cow, it's so good. And, <laughs> And and that was it. That was the character. But like the the his, I love that character. It was hilarious. He was basically hmm. the the lead kid. His name's Coop, and he had his dad. And I was the neighbor, and uh, so me and and Coop's dad would just have have at each other mm -hmm. in every episode. Right. And uh, his name was Burton Burger. So like every episode, I I would like try to one up him, and then all, all of a sudden when I get him good, I say up your face, Burton Burger. <laughs> Up your face. That was like his cash face. line. Yeah, That's up your face. Good. Like totally. It's, it, it's just a step away from being naughty in three different directions, but it's fine <laughs> as it is. It's exactly nice. But uh, yeah, it was hilarious. And and the other guy, the the neighbor was played by Trevor Duvall, who's an amazing actor. I really look right. up to that guy. He's 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 a great great voice actor. And uh, <laughs> I had lots of fun. You know, and that was another you know great learning. Um, class, a, a great voiceover class for me because I got to, to work with him and Aaron Matthews and Tabitha was on that show and uh, Kathleen Barr. Yeah, great oh. cast. That seems to be a very close-knit group. It is. It's a very small circle of people that, that just keep working. You know, these guys are, you know, in, in their whatever, 30s, 40s, 50s, but they can still sound like little kids. It's, you know, yeah. they'll, they'll, not, they'll never stop working. They're very <laughs> talented folk over here. I've, uh, I, when I'm listening to uh, anime or animation in Japan, I have to say that's one area that I think Japan voice actors are weak at, in my opinion, is I don't think they sound young. Hmm. They're trying to sound like kids. I think they sound like a person trying to sound young, you know, hmm. rather than actually sounding young. But at the same point, I think most, not all, but most of the uh, anime dubs that I hear, the cute girl 
mm-hmm. doesn't sound so much like a cute girl as much as somebody trying to sound cute. Well, that's the thing. I think they they built this stereotype or caricature that they like. Yeah. And that's what people try to emulate, I think. I think that's just like the – I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm speaking a turn, but mm. I think that's what they sort of go for. Yeah. Because that's I, – I, I feel the same way. I feel like the, the anime voices, there's a certain type of voice that they want. Yes, absolutely. For the, those, those kind of characters, like the cute girl or the hero. Yeah. You know? They have yeah, to and, scream their face off really well, loudly. <laughs> and that's why when I see a dub of an anime, I yeah. honestly prefer it if the director just says, okay, this is the original. We're going to go with the general idea, but I want to own it for our own. I don't want to imitate how they sound. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. really like it when they do that. Yeah, and I think that's true. I think we do get a bit of a different direction over here. Yeah, and that's I good. I think we do get room to play a bit more. I know that just when I see fan dubs of animes, I'm like, you're not a Genki girl. Please stop <laughs> pretending that you're a Genki girl. It's, <laughs> but that's yeah. <laughs> I, I watched uh, Attack on Titan and ah, uh, loved it. Loved it. Mm-hmm. But man, those guys are just screaming. Every scene is so intense. Rightfully yes. so. They're going through some traumatic times in oh, yes. in that city. Um, but <laughs> uh, but man, it's like. I tried it. I I think I was in uh, in uh, in Toronto or Edmonton or something. I was watching it during this kind of crazy two weeks where I was in Edmonton doing um, uh, a con over there and then right. shooting a, a, a TV show in Toronto and then having okay. to go to Houston to do a Fiesta Equestria. Right, right. And I would watch the anime on my time off when mm-hmm. I had a little bit of break. Right. And uh, I tried doing, you know, imagining doing a whole episode screaming like that I'm like, this <laughs> brings me back to all the stories of dragon ball and how how much oh, screaming yes. was involved in that show <laughs> and uh, honestly the, if i could recommend a single anime of recent years it's going to be madoka madoka blew my mind it's a few years later and we still uh, friends and i still have deep discussions about it really it messes with your head because it, the first two episodes start off as a cheery ball of fluff and then you realize it's covering a just ball of chaos with spikes <laughs> that you did not expect to hit you. It's amazing. Right. Okay. And I have to say, in that one, even the English dub I find to be pretty darn good. Not fantastic. I'm still preferred in the original, but oh. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Hmm. Um, is there an English dub of Attack on Titan? You know, I'm not sure there's an official one yet. Hmm. I, I, I don't keep up to date on it. I'm sorry. but That'd be great if they brought that to Vancouver. That'd be really fun. We'd all <laughs> lose our voices. Practice screaming. <laughs> exactly. We'd all lose our voices, but it'd be fun. <laughs> well, uh, a question that I ask in each of my interviews. Um, mm-hmm. In all of My Little Pony, yes. what would you say is one line or one scene that speaks out to you the most? And I will even give free range to either of the Equestria Girls movies if, you know, you happen to know a character in there or something. I don't know. we got to <laughs> stop bumping into each other like this. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that speaks volumes to me. <laughs> you know, um, just like a line, a line from the show or a line that my characters have done. Oh, I, I ask this question to everybody, and most people have never worked on the show, so <laughs> whomever you like. You know what? To be honest with you, I haven't watched all the episodes to actually oh, no, find a catchphrase that I like. That's fine. Um, I, and it doesn't even have to be a catchphrase. It's just something that you're like, wow, I saw this, and this part kind of really spoke to me, or I understood it. I, you know what? I, I, I can't even think of anything. I've only right. know my lines, which is so narcissistic. <laughs> that's so terrible. No. But um, look at all these uh, characters you've got. It honestly, if you said that you had watched every episode of every single thing you've done, I would <laughs> call you out for lying. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's true. I haven't watched every episode. It's it's hard to well, to do that. I doubt every author has written read every book that comes out. It's mm. just what happens. No, but I, you know what I do enjoy though, um, is, is Andrea's characters, okay. um, Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. They just, they, they both speak to me so much because I am totally bonkers like Pinkie Pie sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like I can totally relate on that 
ADD level, like I right. said earlier. Yeah. But I think that when she does Fluttershy, it cracks me up because <laughs> she's so funny. And she's almost like when she goes into that whispery voice where you can barely hear what she's talking about, mm -hmm. it, it cracks me up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I really applaud Andrea for bringing life into those characters. Okay, I'll take yeah. it. That's a good one. <laughs> Well, and I, I think we should mention it real fast, but recently you did a song, a duet. Oh, yes, I did do a little song. Yeah. I sang a little duet from Frozen. I don't know, because I, I was watching on YouTube that uh, they, they titled it Good Looking Parents Singing Frozen. And uh, they were lip singing it. Right. But I was like, eh, you know what? I haven't sang for a while. I used to do a lot of musical theater. and It's been around two and a half years since I've done any theater. Wow. And I really miss it. And I miss singing. So I asked Shannon if she wanted to, Shannon Chan Kent, who does the singing voice for for uh, Pinky. Is mm -hmm. that right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, she said yes. So so we recorded it in a, in a local studio here. And, and it was a blast. Yeah. Lots of fun doing it. Yeah, it yeah. sounds really good. Thanks, man. And I love the tagline at the end. Give us our green cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, little, a little joke, but we're totally serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those, <laughs> we're joking, unless you're offering. Yeah, no, we're not. Give unless you're offering. Card. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah we will take it. All right, yeah. We will pay you money for it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of the only things missing from, Japan, uh, from Disney theme parks is groups of choirs or duets just walking around. Stop in an area, set up a quick mic, sing, then move mm -hmm. to the next area. That would be nice, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it would be quite difficult because they have such a, a type that they want, right? You have to look like well, the character. Well, I mean, not cosplayer, not in character, just group of singers. Just group of singers. Okay, yeah, sure. That's fine. For I, I think it would be you know useful for the you know three hour wait from this point line mm, type thing. That's like, true. <laughs> hey, yep. you know what? Let's bring in some people to sing for you every hour or so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, now everyone's got an iPhone though, or some sort of mobile device that they just this is true. They, they bury their face in that. This is true. This is true. Or I would suggest playing uh, the headbands game or that charades game. Oh uh, yeah, that's a good one. Heads up, heads up. That yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we invented a lot of games in my youth for passing away time there. Mm -hmm. Best one was, uh, uh, oh, actually, actually, best one was not possible until the internet. But if anyone's desperate for it, <laughs> go to Google Translate, type in any song lyric, just one line, or line from famous line from a movie, translate it in some language, copy it then paste it back in and translate it back to English and see if anybody can tell what the heck it was. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It works really well. I mean, wow. you get like an idiom, uh, invisible insanity mm. was originally out of sight, out of mind. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's really, that's actually quite clever. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> did you, did you develop this yourself? Have you patented it? Patent? No, because I don't have any translating software, but <laughs> <laughs> Should do it, man. No, Make that's that game. I, I tell you what, that if I have a single strength <laughs> as a teacher, you give me forty-five seconds in a room with items, I'll give you a game. I'll give you. <laughs> My boss says that she's written them down, and I've invented forty-five games for the school so far. So wow, good for you. That's how it works. <laughs> very creative. Jack. Well, thank you very much. Oh. I have found uh, if anybody wants to do a Thurston Howell the third voice. Yes. Just don't let your teeth separate ever. Yes, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, everybody, today we've been speaking with Mr. Vincent Tong. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, be sure to check him out on Twitter and his YouTube channel. Well, there'll be lots of new Disney songs coming soon, I'm sure. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and you have an appearance at uh, NYC PonyCon, right? Yeah, PonyCon NYC. PonyCon. Uh, that's happening uh, February sometime, 13th, I think. <laughs> Around Valentine's yeah. Day, yeah. Yeah, that's right. 13th, 14th, 15th, or 15th, 16th, 17th. It's like a three-day thing. There's a President's Day in there somewhere. Okay. So, yeah. That's a holiday I'm very aware of living in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're in the East, come say hi. I would love to see you and meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for coming by. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Everyone, this has been Osaka Jack on Into the Spotlight. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>